Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Malkin of Living Streams International bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. This morning I'd like to capture my thoughts with the words royal flatness. The Bible is full of very interesting characters. I mean, and some of the characters, I must be very honest with you, some of the characters are, are, are really out of this world. I mean, sometimes you don't even know how they think and what makes them do what they do. And, all that. and there are others that is very, very uh, interesting. I mean, you can just read them like that and just say, wow. But really, 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 really strong and strange characters. Now, and sometimes there are good people who do things that you wonder, but why did you do this? A typical example, why I'm calling it a royal flatness. Do you remember the story of David and Bathsheba? When David got involved with somebody else and wife and all blah, 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 and all the wrong things happened. Now the Bible says Nathan, the prophet, you know, went to talk to um, David. And when he went to uh, talk to David, after he bringing to David that, look, this is the magnitude of what you have done. This is how serious God looks at it. And I was even reading something. God said, listen, I've given you all this woman. Even if you want more, I'll give you more. God, whoa, get it. Hey, 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 please. This is no license to pursue the path of polygamy. I beg you. But God said, if you wanted more, there was no good, no problem. I could have given it to you. But David then goes for somebody else. And then in the end, now the Bible says when the magnitude of what he had done hit David. Now David did something that is really, really, for me it was like surreal. The Bible said, you know, the king is standing with his nobles and all the people with his uh, courtesans around him. And then um, Nathan looks at him and says, you are the man. This is what you did. The Bible says David fell upon his face in repentance. So, I'm so sorry. So his courtesans, the captains, his guards, his, they are all around him. And here is the king groveling in the, on the floor. Here is the king lying on the floor and saying, my goodness, I'm so sorry. The magnitude of what he did flattened David's pride. He said, I can't, I can't be royal in this. I can't be regal in this. In those days, or what, what is that? It, is, it is men who, who, who rather fall at the feet of royalty. And it is not royalty that falls at the feet of ordinary men. So, I mean, it is the ordinary man who bows to, to, to the royalty. Royalty rather sits or stands, and every other person bows or lies. You get it? In obeisance. And then guess what? David made this, I, I, it just blew me away. He said, this thing that I have done, this is not the pathway royalty should take. This is not the path a dignified person should take. This is not something I should have done. And the Bible says, I, say, I, I can't afford to be proud in this. I can't afford to, to, to wear epaulets of pride and raise up my shoulders and this thing. No. What I have done, I'm lower than all these people standing. Because even though I'm regal and I'm supposed to have thoughts that are lofty, thoughts that are high above them, I have submitted to something for a base desire, and here am I. So I'm worse off than them. They are even mightier than me. So the Bible says he prostrated himself in front of them. He said, I got no time for pride. This thing, what I'm done, I'm so sorry. And he went on his face. Um, you know the challenge of leadership. And because of the Machiavellian concepts we have, that, you know, a leader mustn't, a leader is never wrong, a leader doesn't do it. So sometimes it's difficult for us to say sorry. But you know what? It doesn't take away from you. David said, what I have done, I can't stand upright. So he fell on his face and said, I am sorry. The magnitude of what he did, he said, I can't afford to hold up my shoulders in pride. This thing that I've done flattens me. How long are you going to stay perched on your lofty seat of pride and arrogance? 
How long are you going to sit on your lofty seat of making excuses? How long are you going to sit on that place where you think everybody is wrong and you are right? And then you become the victim instead of you the villain. And other people are villains rather. But you are the victim. But you are the villain in actual fact. And as a result of that, I've seen many, many leadership you know, run into trouble and try and pretend, well, I can't afford to bow. I can't afford to say sorry. I can't afford to be flattened. My ego cannot be flattened. But you see what he did? And look at what God said. He said, you know, I, I, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. And I'm not even going to take away the throne from you. Oh, wow. So sometimes the fear of losing our thrones, of the fear of losing where we are perched on the tree of ego, sometimes as a result of that, we refuse to be flattened. You know what? God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Flatten that ego and you'll be in a better place tomorrow. Choices are always yours. See you.